Ayan. General Whitney called us in and said you are now a constitutional assembly and will work on writing the constitution because General Mac MacArthur is not satisfied with the various drafts which have been presented to him. We are to be operating in top secret and that this draft constitution would, when completed, be presented to the Japanese government so that they could present it to the diet to the people as the Japanese government's draft. To do the job, MacArthur gave the government section six days. Well, I never thought we could uh, do it. Once I heard him say he wants it by the end of the week, uh, <laughs> you know, I was thinking in terms of a month or six weeks. This was the opportunity that uh, many people would really give their right arms for because here they, so the small group of people were invested with the responsibility of drafting a constitution for one of the great nations of the world. Here we were, a group of officers, although not a single one of us was a career officer, but still we were hardly comp comparable to the founding fathers who drafted our constitution in the U.S. and we realized, we knew that. There were 24 authors, among them a congressman, a novelist, a newspaper man, a doctor, two academics, and five lawyers. No one had any constitutional expertise. I guess I was picked because I had a freshly minted PhD in, in politics from Princeton. And maybe because Chuck Hades wanted another Cornell uh, alumnus. There were uh, eight civilians. The civilians were picked pretty much by random, except for one young woman by the name of Beata Sirota, who had lived uh, in Japan, so she knew what it was to live in a police state. Consequently, she was assigned to the Civil Liberties uh, Committee. When we were given this task, I thought, my goodness, uh, we have to have some prototypes. And I took a Jeep and a driver, and I drove from one university library to the other and gathered up as many constitutions as I could. Of course, I didn't want to gather up all the constitutions in one library because it would, might make the librarian suspicious. So I came back, I think, with maybe 10, 12 constitutions. Richard Poole was born on Hirohito's birthday. He was chosen to write the new constitutional role of the emperor. You can't help but uh, ponder the role of a young ensign in uh, drafting provisions that uh, will, will govern the functions of the imperial throne and the emperor. Well, it is, it is rather a, a large order to swallow. We didn't want him to be just window dressing. On the other hand, we didn't want to give him the uh, powers that he had under the previous constitution. finally arrived at the term that the emperor is the symbol of the state and of the unity of the people. Memories of the war haunted the Constitution. Article 9 called on Japan to lay down its arms forever. It is very difficult to require a country forever and a day to forswear armed forces even in self-defense. So I raised a question, and uh, Colonel Cades looked at me and said, Poole, do you know where that draft camp comes from? I said, no, sir. He said, the general. And he said, need I say anything more? And I said, no, sir. MacArthur was concerned with his place in history, and wouldn't it be remarkable that a military man was able to induce a society like Japan to renounce armaments? I therefore commend 
Japan's proposal for the renunciation of war to the thoughtful consideration of all of the peoples of the world. It's worked out greatly to the advantage of the Japanese because while we spend six plus percent of our GNP uh, on, on, uh, uh, for military purposes, they've held theirs to one percent. <laughs> The article on women's rights was written by Beata Sirota. The idea that a woman couldn't decide whom she wanted to marry, the idea that she couldn't divorce uh, a man, uh, that uh, she really had no rights as far as property was concerned, uh, was very disturbing to me. And so I wrote in many, many uh, very specific rights such as even prenatal care and, uh, and maternity leave and all kinds of things of that type, which appear in many other constitutions in the world, not in the American Constitution. But when we presented this to the steering committee, the steering committee, which was made up all of men, uh, said that this went further than the American Constitution and was too specific. The provisions went into great detail, uh, almost like a social security law, and uh, so we struck them out. And I argued for quite some time, and I think I even cried a little bit. She was very emotional about this. I mean, uh, here I am in uniform, you know, with a funny slip of a girl. <laughs> They're really weeping. And uh, finally, the steering committee said, well, they would incorporate the uh, main rights that I had written down. Women's rights? Changing the role of the emperor? These radical changes never occurred to Japan's conservative government, including future prime minister Shigeru Yoshida. Then Yoshida and the others saw the new American version. The reaction of the Japanese was one of complete astonishment. They were dumbfounded. Uh, General Whitney passed four copies out to them uh, so that they could read the draft and said, now we know you want to read this and consider it, so my staff and I will go into the garden when Shirasu came to bring us back, he said to Whitney, I, we're sorry we've kept you so long standing out here. And Whitney said, oh, think nothing of it. We've been enjoying your atomic sunshine. At which point, incidentally, uh, a B-29 flew over uh, the foreign minister's residence rather low. I thought it certainly had uh, 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 persuasive element. <laughs> you got to accentuate the positive.